Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to show you all how to multiply radical expressions. We'll be dealing with square roots, cube roots, and other radicals. So first we'll start off with the simple ones here. Now the main idea that we're using is that anytime I do the square root of a times the square root of b, I could write this as the square root of a times b. This also works if I had a cube root in front, except the resulting radical would also have a cube root in front. So this is just an important idea that we're going to make use of. Another thing too, we're assuming that the variables under the even index are non-negative, but if I have something like this, I could just say this is the square root of a squared, which is equal to a. So matching square root radicals cancel out is another idea we're going to make use of. So here, when we multiply, we've got square root of 5x. Let's just make that neater. Square root of 5x times the square root of 5x minus 3 times the square root of 5x. So square root of 5x times square root of 5x is just 5x using this property here. And then we've got minus 3 times the square root of 5x. And this is as simple as this will get. So we're, we've got this in simplest form. So first question, this is our solution here. Now for the second question, we have two binomials. So this is going to be a little bit more involved when we multiply, but we're just going to use the distributive property. We've got 9 times 1, and then we've got 9 times square root of 2i is 9 square root of 2i. So we've got 9 plus, and then this is 9 square root of 2i. And then next, we've got square root of 2i times 1, which is square root of 2i. And then last, this is square root of 2i times square root of 2i. So then to simplify this, we've got 9 plus, these are like terms we could combine, 9 radical 2y plus radical 2y, that's, there's an invisible 1 in front here. We add the coefficients and that's going to be 10 square root of 2y. And then the last thing we have is square root 2y times square root 2y is 2y. So this, we could technically leave it in this form, but I prefer to write the non-radical terms first. So you could say like 9 plus 2y plus 10 square root of 2y. All right, and this is as simple as it gets. All right, don't make the mistake of adding non-like terms. Uh, that's common in these questions. Like don't say 9 plus 2y is 11y or 2y plus 10 radical 2y is something like 12y radical 2y. None of these terms match, so we have to stop here. Now for the next questions here, we have more uh, products to deal with. But what's special about these two is these are what we call conjugate terms. So the shortcut to this question would just be to say the first term squared, a times a is a squared, minus radical b times negative radical b is just b. So as you master some of the other concepts of algebra, you know, like this idea, these questions can become easier in certain parts. Okay, but otherwise, if we want to show all the work, a times a times a is a squared. And then we've got a times negative radical b is negative a radical b. And then radical b times a is a radical b. And then radical b times negative radical b is negative. And then square root b times square root b is b. So you could see here that these terms, in fact, cancel out, which leaves us with a squared minus b, which if you know this difference of two squares concept, it makes the question go a lot faster. Now for this one, it's a little bit more complicated because we've got a fourth root here. But one thing I like to do for these questions is I use this concept, that I use the power over root concept. I could rewrite these in terms of a power over root. So under my radical is 3y, and it's technically 3y to the first. And same thing for this one here. This is 3y to the first. So then I could rewrite this as x minus 3y to the power 1 over the root 4. And this is going to be multiplied by 2x minus, same thing, 3y to the power 1 over root 4. Now, the reason why I like to do it this way is because then I could use this law of exponents 
when I multiply two exponents that have the same base, I just add the exponents together. So now I've got 2x times x. That's what we're doing first. So we're multiplying these two. It's 2x squared. And then we've got x times negative 3y to the 1 fourth is minus x. And then I'm going to make sure I keep these parentheses here. Like this. And I'll write this. So let me just ungroup this. And I'll move it down so I don't run out of space. OK. So that's for, for this part. And now the next thing I'm distributing here, we'll switch up the colors. We've got 2x times negative 3y to the 1 fourth is minus 2x parentheses 3y to the 1 fourth. And then last, we've got a negative times a negative goes to a positive. And then it's 3y. So you see how here on the side, like if I'm doing this in my head, I've got 3y to the 1 fourth times 3y to the 1 fourth. When we do 3y, you see how like this product times, well, this term here times this term here. So really what I'm doing is I'm adding the fractions 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. And a fourth plus a fourth is a half. Okay, so then if I want to write this in simplest radical form, what we could do, well, what we could do first is combine like terms before we write anything in simplest radical form. So these terms here are the like terms. So we will combine those, and I'll get this stuff out of the way, since like now, um, hopefully this makes sense. And this will shrink, so we have the space. So let's just move all this stuff up. So then here, we've got 2x squared. And now minus x minus 2x is minus 3x. And it's 3y to the 1 fourth. And then we've got plus 3y to the 1 half. So if we want to write all of this in radical form, we've got 2x squared minus 3x. And then this is the fourth root of 3y. 3y to the 1 fourth, we could switch back to fourth root form. And then 3y to the 1 half is just radical 3y. So this is our solution to the last question in simplest radical form. I'm not going to read all of that out because it's going to take forever to say, but this is our, our final answer. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on multiplying radical expressions together. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe button below. And if you have any requests, please leave it in the comments section below. Thank you for watching.